Pro Group Management. Workers' Comp that works for you. Welcome to Nevada Newsmakers on the broadcast today, a spirited discussion of what's going on in the Middle East with Jill Derby and Chris Thompson. It's all coming up next on an all-new Nevada Newsmakers. Nevada Newsmakers Goes to Washington is brought to you by Pro Group Management, Workers' Comp that works for you. NV Energy. NV Energy proudly serves Nevada, providing electricity to 2.4 million electric customers. And University Medical Center of Southern Nevada, offering the highest level of care in Nevada. Remember 2010 in Northern Nevada, 13 to 14 percent unemployment, thousands of homes in foreclosure, Nevada's casinos closing? Families in the Reno Sparks area were hurting. Many were losing everything. Then Story County launched a game changer for our region, a public-private industrial partnership, streamlined permitting slash bureaucracy, attracting Fortune 500 companies that made Nevada their home. Story County generated a river of cash to area communities. Economic studies by the state and others for the Gigafactory consistently show positive economic benefits for our region. $4 billion in local wages, $17 billion in consumer spending and economic activity, over $100 million in taxes to Washoe, Story, Reno, Sparks, and Nevada, just for the Gigafactory alone. Story County, improving Northern Nevada one industry at a time. Fantastic cocktails and delicious food. It's a good time to eat. Over 500 hot slots plus electronic table games. It's a good time to play. Player rewards and big time jackpots. It's a good time to win. Ooh, you get times to tame a wreck. Save money and take transit. Did you know you can ride the bus all day for less than what it would cost you for a gallon of gas? Plan your trip now by going to rtcwashoe.com. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad on No Holds Barred Political Forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we are delighted to welcome back to the program Jill Derby. She is chair of the American University of Iraq and Kurdistan and Colonel Chris Thompson, retired with the U.S. Army and National Guard. Pleasure to have you both here. Thank um, you. For the audience, we're taping this on the morning of October 16th, so they have the context for the discussion. Um, with what's going on in the Middle East, um, I, I wanted to have a discussion on not the actual fighting that's going on and, and what is expected over the next few days, but the ramifications of all of this and the scenarios that we're looking at. And Jill, to start with you, um, it, it looks like this Hamas attack obviously planned mm -hmm. for several years, mm -hmm. um, but done at this point in time because it appeared that Israel was getting so close to having a relationship publicly with Saudi Arabia. Would you think that that's correct? Oh, I think that's, that might be one factor, but there's another much bigger factor, and that is what's been going on in Israel under the Netanyahu government. Um, you know, Sam, I get frustrated because coverage in this country is so one-sided, but if you listen in the Middle East, uh, you find out that in the Jerusalem Post, they did a poll, and four out of five Israelis blame Netanyahu for this. And Netanyahu, who came into power, was it less than a year ago, could only get a coalition when he linked up with far-right religious extremists um, that don't even believe that Palestinians have any rights and feel that they ought to be able to just seize Palestinian land, which they've been doing um, with Netanyahu's full approval and killing pa Palestinians to seize their land. That's been going on this past year, and we all know of uh, Netanyahu's efforts to weaken the judiciary, to, so to seize power, and hundreds of thousands of, of Israelis have been in the streets for right. months protesting his government. 
And it was interesting that, I don't know if you saw this, but just yesterday there was a guest opinion editorial in the um, New York Times by a uh, major in the Israeli army who said, in fact, this could have been entirely avoided and blame Netanyahu entirely for it. And that's what's going on in Israel. They're a, a nation that is divided, badly divided, um, and hundreds of thousands of protesters, including members of the military, that are saying, we will not fight if you go ahead with this coalition and the, and the, the uh, uh, changes you're planning that will undermine Israeli democracy. So Israel was seriously weakened. Their military had the eyes off the ball because they've got all this going on internally in, in Israel. And so they were just weakened, and I'm sure Hamas sees the opportunity of that. I think in the background could be the Iran deal as well, but understand that from the standpoint of close up, Hamas was looking at an Israel that was a bit in disarray and didn't have half of its citizenry behind it because of it really is these far-right religious extremists that are calling the shots. And Net Netanyahu is allowing that because that's the, that's the only thing that allows him to stay in power. And, and as a result of that, people like Hamas, who represent Gaza, um, who are terrorists and did horrible things, but terrorism is born and bred in, uh, in, in terrible hopelessness and despair. And this last year, for the Palestinians, as they've watched Netanyahu give approval to settlers illegally, and the world says it's illegal, seizing land, Palestinian land, and killing Palestinians. And they've probably killed up to 250 just in this last year in the effort to seize their lands, confiscate their lands. And uh, people over in that press say, where's the moral outrage there? All right, so, so a lot to unpack in what Jill has just said there. But I guess that the, the most important part of all of this to me is that, you know, militaries and politics are supposed to be apart. They're supposed to be separate. And it seems like the Israelis had, uh, did not have their eye on the ball at all, I, which was just shocking to me and so many others. Well, it, it, true. I mean, although y you have to wonder, um, with a group like Hamas. I mean, it's hard to fathom terrorists coming in and cutting heads off babies, killing people in their beds, dragging people from a dance party whose, whose theme was peace and dragging them bloodied across the border, raping them. It's hard to fathom that kind of uh, abhorrent behavior anywhere in the world, e even, even between Israel and Gaza. And, and, you know, no matter what, what has gone on in the past with politically within Israel or with the border communities, you know, Israel's had a pretty good record overall. They've been attacked three times in, in three wars, 48, 67, 73. They conquered all the Sinai, invaded into mainland Egypt, and gave that land back, the entire Sinai Peninsula and the land that they conquered in Egypt and some of the land from, from Lebanon and Syria. So they haven't, they haven't been some aggressor, uh, certainly, you know, certainly not like some of the other people that we've seen in the Middle East. And so I just think it's, it's yeah, did, they, did their intelligence service fail them? Absolutely. But, but here we are, as, as, the say, as the modern saying goes. And the question is, what do we do now? You know, let me make clear that Hamas is a terrorist group, and this is what terrorists do. It's guerrilla warfare. We saw this with ISIS horrific kinds of things they do. And terrorists don't have, I mean, it's really a David and Goliath battle over there. If you think that Israel controls the land, the sea, and the sky, it is a modern superpower militarily. Uh, it has uh, fighter jets and um, tanks. And Hamas has rockets and uh, motorbikes and hang gliders, it looks like. I mean, really, this is r rather amazing and then the disparity that's there, and obviously this was planned for a long time, and Israel was in a weakened position, and Hamas took advantage of that. But I don't think you can overlook the devastation that Israel has caused, caused for the Palestinians. And uh, uh, doing many illegal things, 
Uh, and what's happened is the religious extremists have taken over and they do not want a separate state for Palestinians. Okay, so We so advocate a two-state solution, and so does most of the world. But the religious extremists, in fact, uh, one of them has just called the Palestinians animals. Okay, so... There's two so million people in there. Okay, so um, y you have a situation here where the Israeli government has gone from a far-right government to a government of unity, so they have included the opposition into that government at this point in time. You mean for to fight the war? To fight the war. Uh, yeah, of course. Um, and and so so th that is on, on, on the table there, but you know you don't bring up the topic of Iran and the role that Iran has played in this. Sure, I think Iran's right in the middle of this. I do. And 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 yet at this point in time. Even the Biden administration is not saying that Iran had a direct role in this. So I, I, I find that, and I, I, I guess I'm going to throw that to you, Chris, um, because it would seem to me to be obvious because they have supplied so much weaponry. And, and I do have to disagree with you about the, the, the armed state of Hamas and Hezbollah is that they have hundreds of thousands of rockets, rockets. And, and, rockets. And, and, and guided missiles. Um, they, they are not. An unarmed, gr an unarmed group. Yeah, so, so I think, you know, where we are with Iran and Hamas is history has shown there are some people that you cannot negotiate with or that if you negotiate with them, it's, it's not worth the piece of paper that, that it's written on. And I, I liken this to 1938. Neville Chamberlain goes to Munich. He makes a deal with Adolf Hitler. He comes back to London. He waves a paper around and say, we're gonna have peace for our time. And that here Hitler's signature is on this paper. And at the same time, Hitler was back in Munich with his cronies laughing about it and planning the extermination of the Jews. And I think there's a direct correlation to that kind of, of attitude here. Hamas and Iran's stated objective is the extermination of Jews and the extermination of the state of Israel. What else is Israel to do? They have no other choice here uh, in order to survive. You cannot negotiate with these two, two people. They have proven feckless in the past. And, and of course, now they're talking negotiation. Hamas just the other day said, hey, we'll stop the air bombing, we'll release the hostages. They cannot be trusted and neither can Iran and they've shown that. I'm glad <coughs> Chris brought up history because I think you have to understand this whole and the broad scope of history. Certainly the history of the founding of Israel where why there are people in Gaza to begin with is Israel's terrorist groups back in 48 bombed and terrorized villagers in southern Palestine and they fled to Gaza and they've been there ever since. And the history also shows, even the broadest history, that people under military occupation do not just sit there and say, well, this is okay. You know, terrorism is born of that kind of frustration and hopelessness. And you know, look at the Taliban. They ended up taking back Afghanistan because they didn't the military occupation of the US. Our history in that is not a very good one. Uh, Vietnam, the same thing. People want their land and they want their lives. And military occupation, and it's been a brutal one under Israel, by human right records, um, you can see that. So I think you have to understand this in that broad scope of history, what the Palestinians have been up against and their feeling of hopelessness that the Israelis will not abide by international law and the Geneva Conventions and simply are determined to seize Palestinian lands. In fact, a member of the Israeli cabinet has called for ethnic cleansing of Palestinians. That, that's not the position of the Israeli government. And to suggest that the Israeli government right now wants to wipe out the Palestinian people is, I think, irresponsible and totally inaccurate. What they it, are is matter of fact, the Israeli government has, has supported, the official government position is to support a two-state position. No, and I, I, don't care, I don't care what, how much blame or how much if settlements are, are coming in, you cannot justify what the Palestinian people did. And Israel has every right to defend itself. We, let's keep in mind, Israel was put in place post-World War II after six million Jews were wiped out. They were gassed in the ovens. 
if Hamas and Iran had their way, they'd set up ovens tomorrow in downtown Tel Aviv and start gas and juice. And every, everybody, everybody that's aware of history and everybody that pays attention to what Iran and Hamas says would agree with that. Let's be clear that if we're looking at history, the Palestinians say, why did we have to pay the price for this? We didn't do anything to the Jews in World War II, but it justified the world felt guilty, we felt guilty, everybody allowed it, and so let's take this land that belonged to Palestinians. This is, it's all rooted in that, but let me be very clear. No, the Netanyahu government does not believe in a two-state solution. We support that, and many in the world support that but not the Netanyahu government okay, and the religious extremists that are in control now, but, uh, along but, with Netanyahu. But did not Hamas destroy the perspective, a uh, uh, prospective of having a two-state solution um, in the next decade or more by what they did? Well, you've got to be clear that there are really two governments among the Palestinian, and Hamas is the government in the Gaza. Gaza elected in 2006, they haven't had an election since then. But you have the Palestinian Authority in the West Bank. Which is and the most corrupt authority. It's corrupt, so are so many other governments, but it's the representative and the moderate one. And they're willing to do a deal with Israel. But Israel, I think, and a lot of the opinions coming out are Netanyahu prefers the Hamas because they're so, uh, they're a terrorist organization and the Palestinian Authority isn't. But it's the West Bank lands that are being seized now uh, with full support of Netanyahu and P Palestinians are being killed in trying to protect their land, land that they own, and the Ill illegal seizure the Israelis are uh, okay, but Jill, taking on. But Jill, but, but isn't it hard to make that case today when we've seen what happened when Hamas en masse came across and massacred Israelis in the way that they did. Hamas is a terrorist organization, and you've got to recognize this is what terrorist organizations do. Uh, the Palestinian Authority is not a terrorist organization. Well, some some would argue with that. Oh no, of course they're not, and they've all they've also it's in the record, you know, said that they could work with that. They support a two-state solution. See, Gaza but, but is. They, the, but they also haven't had an election in how many years? It's probably been, a, well, it's been sooner than that, but never mind. Gaza is separate, completely separate, and walled off by Israel and Egypt on the other side. In fact, it's been called an open air prison, and it's been that way for 16 years. So how do you expect people who live in an open air prison to be moderate and reasonable? But the problem is, this last year has ex exacerbated the whole uh, sort of sense of the hopelessness of Palestinians. Chris? So I, I just think, you know, what, what says all you need to know about, about Hamas and about their view of society and their view of their own people is going on right now. Hamas is not letting their own people evacuate under the, under the Israeli evacuation. They want their own people there to die, to be, to be in the way of the, of the munitions from the Israeli army when they come in on the ground. And the reason is, is because that will go global. It'll put pressure on Israel, put pressure on Biden. They're putting their own citizens, the innocent, the children, the mothers with, with in, in pregnancy out in front of them to protect themselves and create this global, this global media firestorm is what they're hoping for. And that to me, that is despicable and it's cowardly and I don't care what the history is. There's no excuse for a human being to do things like this. All right, let's take a break. We'll come right back after this timeout. Big R is Northern Nevada's number one golden fire wood pellet supplier. More heat, less ash, 100% natural, and no additives. And there's only one place that stocks this many wood pellets. And that's Big R in Sparks, Winnemucca, Fallon, Fernley, and Lovelock, a river of wood pellets at Big R. For 50 years, Nevada Heating has been keeping people comfortable in their homes. At Nevada Heating, call the Do It Right guys and get the air conditioning back on today. That's the Nevada Heating way. Why sweat for days on end when Nevada Heating can get your air conditioning fixed today? Call us today and we'll fix it today. 
at 323-5585 or schedule us on our website at nevadaheating.com. As you know, Reno is booming. Toll's development company is helping it grow with insightful design and development, building community with every project, adding beauty, adding excitement, emphasizing our shared humanity. Reno is becoming bigger. Toll's development is helping it become better, more livable, more enjoyable. To learn more, go to tollsdevelopment.com, tollsdevelopment.com. Retail's impact on Nevada's economy, enormous. 8,600 businesses, large and small, employing 145,000 workers. And last fiscal year, retail paid tax on nearly $60 billion in sales. We're the Retail Association of Nevada. We support retail, we help it grow, and we mean business. R-A-N-N-V dot org. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we're having a spirited debate here on what's going on in the Middle East with Jill Derby, chair of the American University of Iraq in Kurdistan, and Colonel Chris Thompson, retired of the U.S. Army and National Guard. Chris, um, Hezbollah uh, is poised on the northern border of Israel, um, and they have tens of thousands of rockets that they can fire off at, uh, at Israel. The United States is sending two aircraft carrier groups to the region. Um, what are your thoughts on what the potential involvement can be of the United States in this? This is a very dangerous time, and, and it's, it's, you know, everybody here in the state of Nevada, it's easy to say, well, we're kind of far removed, we're West Coast, this is, you know, a whole different, whole different uh, universe in terms of what's going on. But this can affect all of us, because t if there is a regional conflict, that's going to do massive, it's going to have massive impact on the global economy and on the price of oil. Um, what is China going to do with Taiwan if we get sucked into a conflict on the Middle East? And so for the president and our Pentagon, um, this is a very dicey time in their world. And I think, you know, there's already shooting going on. Hezbollah is already firing rockets into Israel. There's already rockets coming in from Syria. Uh, the Israelis have already conducted airstrikes on the airport at Damascus and Aleppo in, in, in Syria to prevent, because the Iranian arms and supplies are coming in to Syria. So we are on the cusp, and that could very drastically change a lot of things uh, in, in the world economy. And so it's, it's up to all of us to keep a close eye. And I'm going to take one more break and then let you respond, okay? okay. And we'll be right back. Safety is the number one priority for the trucking industry. Over $7 billion a year is spent on technology like this electronic eye that will apply the brakes automatically. But the most important factor for safety is the truck driver. These hardworking men and women who safely move over 70% of our nation's freight and 94% of Nevada's. We thank you because trucks move America forward. What do you count on? You count on your power every day. At NV Energy, we've always powered what's important to you, but we're not looking at the past. We're focused on the future. While our standards are high, our rates will remain low. And our commitment to renewables isn't just meeting standards, but leading the way. Because you can count on more than just your power. You can count on the company who brings it to you. That's our promise. You can count on it. Take a look at Pro Group Management and see how your workers' comp requirements can be met head on. By taking a proactive approach, Pro Group can assure that your company is meeting or exceeding state and federal standards. As you move forward in your industry, Pro Group moves with you, simplifying regulatory tasks, clearing the way so you can get the job done and look to your future success. Pro Group Management, workers' comp that works for you. The Nevada Builders Alliance has been protecting the interests of the construction industry for over 50 years. Our programs save members thousands of dollars every year and allow them to provide much needed benefits to their employees. Our industry also allows Nevada to grow. If you're thinking about a career in the construction industry, reach out. 
And if you haven't thought of a career in construction, what are you waiting for? We are the Nevada Builders Alliance. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we have a debate going on between Colonel Chris Thompson and Jill Derby. Um, Jill, you, you get pretty much the last word here, I well, think. Well, no, I just want to say about, of course, Iran's involvement. That's what we have going on in the Middle East. I regret to this day the fact that President Trump canceled the Iran nuclear deal. We would have more of an ability to work with Iran somehow if that had been maintained. And I know we've still worked on trying to get that back. It did destabilize the region. And it did bring Iran into a closer communication and sort of advocacy effort. But mind you, from our invading Iraq back when is what brought Iran more power in Iraq and other parts of the region. It seems like when we interfere and we bring our ideas about how it should be and try to impose them on other people, it never works out well. Okay, you got 20 seconds, Chris. Well, I think Iran can't, can't be trusted in a treaty. Here they, t they took $6 billion from President Biden uh, recently and all the time knowing this attack is gonna come in to Israel. They are feckless, they can't be trusted. Uh, making a treaty with them or negotiating with them is a waste of effort. And, and, and that's, sadly, that's where we've got to leave it. Um, it's an awful situation, and I'm sure we will be having more conversations. Thank you both, and we'll be right Thank back. You. It's the $200,000 Cars and Cash giveaways at Carson Valley Inn. Cash and prize drawing Thursdays and Saturdays. Plus, win a 2023 Ford F-150 or we'll pay you cash instead. Don't miss your chance to play and win. Cars and Cash at the Carson Valley Inn. 7 at 7 is a newscast built for your smartphone. It's a 7-minute newscast available every weekday at 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. at LVRJ.com. We don't waste your time and we give you the day's top stories. We at the RJ have noticed some similarities between us and a certain BTS character, RJ. Plus the latest in Las Vegas business, weather, health and entertainment news. <laughs> 7 at 7 streaming now on your smartphone. Modern Boutique Ahern Hotel and Event Center sits at the heart of the Las Vegas Strip. Two floors of meeting and event space are ideal for groups and conventions. Stay in one of 200 luxurious rooms and suites. Brand your event throughout the property. Flexible event spaces make for easy planning and personalization. Take over the entire hotel with a full buyout option. Nevada Newsmakers Goes to Washington is brought to you by Pro Group Management, Workers' Comp that works for you. NV Energy. NV Energy proudly serves Nevada, providing electricity to 2.4 million electric customers. And University Medical Center of Southern Nevada, offering the highest level of care in Nevada. Thanks for watching Nevada Newsmakers. You can catch us online 24 hours a day at nevadanewsmakers.com or you can download the podcast wherever you like to get your podcast. We'll see you on the next broadcast.